This is Jeremiah. This is Jeremiah. We're going through the Bible here. And um, I was just thinking out loud here. I'm thinking, I'm thinking out loud. That, uh, what am I going to do with this? Uh, and it looks like prophecy. Uh, the first couple of videos. And uh, we talked about some deity. And deity, which of course is the name of a girl in Spanish. A lot of Spanish mothers, some Spanish mothers name their girls deity. I had a couple of girls in my class, young Americans in K through 12, and the girls' names were deity. But as far as my lessons go, I'm going to probably call 35 deity, and we're going to talk about deity. Uh, but we also have 21, so I, I, I'll probably make 21 deity, and 35 I'll do something with later. I'm not sure. But 21 is definitely going to be lessons on deity, where I teach you and share with you what we talked about a little bit with Elohim and the Father and the Son and having a co-identity, such as the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand, and we were at John 1.1, 1, 1, where we have one of the most uh, clear references to Jesus Christ being the Word, and the Word was God, meaning that Jesus Christ was just God by himself. But now he's God and man. And, and then, then the Father will reaffirm his godhood, and Jesus will reaffirm his godhood, especially on the Mount of Transfiguration and so forth. Because the Bible clearly says that there's only one God, repeatedly, and one Lord. So that we know that it's a co-identity. It's very simple. Let's get going. We're going to get into to the son of the gentleman who we just referenced, Mr. David. His son's name is Solomon. And we're going to start uh, uh, motoring into this category. I have some other notes, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to get into those um, that I wanted to add, but I'm thinking out loud. I, I don't want to do that with you. Um, but let's get going to number two. And we're going to turn to Psalm, uh, Proverbs number two. And get into some more deep stuff here because we're getting into the deep stuff. And, and let me remind you, this is Jeremiah with New Covenant. We greet you in the only name given, a lifting hearts and hands and voices unto our God. Let us kneel before the Lord our God, our Maker, for He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture, and we're just merely the sheep of his hand. That's all we are. And uh, he is the only potentate. He is the only pentecrator. He is the only power. And to him be all power, glory, and dominion, and blessings. Let's get going. Um, and prosperity. Proverbs number one. Now, we read Proverbs last time, uh, chapter one. And I'm going to go ahead and skip that and read chapter two. And then we're going to talk about chapter 2, okay? And I have chapter 1 as a brief look. Uh, and let, let's have a quick review. I, I, I looked at chapter 1 as, a, as an introduction into the entire book, which basically says you need to listen. And listeners are learners. And you need to hear you the word of the Lord. You need to listen. And you, you need to become a scribe, and you need to fall on the rock and listen to the rabbi and let him teach you. And that deals with, with kneeling and submission, and that means that you're an Israelite because the word Israel or Israelite, the word Israelite means someone who has knelt before the Lord God. And that means they were wise in doing so. And now they can enter into the commonwealth of New Jerusalem or a new union with God that's made in peace. And that un union was, what was, was made possible by the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so Proverbs is te teaching you to school is open now and we're going to have true knowledge and all this wisdom we want you to take in, which is the ability, the ability to make good decisions, and all of this is new and in stone, coming from the son of David, and a lot of this is new. Uh, 
Now, Abraham didn't talk too much about this. Neither did Isaac, and neither did Jacob. And neither did Joseph, and neither did uh, uh, Noah, or no one talked about all this wonderful stuff that this gentleman and his fa father have just introduced to us in these two books right back to back, book 19 and book 20 in the King James Version here. That's why it's not easy to get through these chapters, because they're very thick. And if you want to be specific and itemize every bit of true knowledge, it'll take you 100 years. Now, I'm going to try to get through this relatively quick, and we're, we're, we're doing a fair job, but uh, let's get going. Because, as I mentioned before, we'll be going, we'll be going I, I'm going to go through this again. I'm, I, I just touched on chapter 1, i got to come back to chapter 1. I just touched on Matthew chapter 5, i got to go back to Matthew 5, okay? Which, which was the Beatitudes and the word blessed. That, that, that lesson is already under blessed right now. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with these particular videos. I'll probably put all three of them under uh, prophecy. I haven't decided. But let's continue. So chapter number two is, and let's read it. My, my son, if thou wilt receive my words, and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom, and apply thine heart unto understanding. Yes, yea, if thou criest after knowledge, and liftest up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver, and searcheth for her as for hid treasures, then thou shalt understand or shall understand the fear of the Lord, and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. He keepeth the paths of judgment, and preserveth the way of his saints. Then shall thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity and you every good path. When wisdom, wisdom entereth into thine heart, when wisdom entereth into thine heart and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul, discretion shall preserve thee, understanding shall keep thee to deliver thee from the way of the evil man, from the man that speaketh forward things, who leave the paths of uprightness to walk in the way of darkness, who rejoice to do evil and delight in the forward of the Frowardness of the wicked, whose ways are crooked, and they forward, and and they forward in their paths. To deliver thee from the strange woman, even from the strange, the stranger with flatter, with her words, which forsaketh the, the guide of her youth, and forgotteth the covenant of her God. For her house inclineth unto death, and her paths unto the dead. Now, none that go unto her return again, neither take they hold of the paths of life, that thou mayest walk in the way of good, of good, And keep the paths of righteousness. Oh, that the word is the, the way of good men. For the upright shall dwell in the land, and the perfect shall remain in it. But the wicked shall be cut off from the earth, and the transgressors shall be rooted out of it. So I have, I have a quick review of this chapter. It's a very deep chapter. I'm going to probably come back to this chapter probably next year if the Lord doesn't come back, because there's too much here. 
Because I, I have to spend, well, we, we won't go into some of my administrative responsibilities here. Uh, let's just get to the lesson. So my son, yield and accept the commands and listen to and place them on your heart. Which is the same thing the, the Lord says in chapter 1 and chapter 2 of Isaiah. These guys repeat the same ideas over and over again. But, but, but they're worded differently to different people. Let's continue. To listen to the commandments and place them on your heart and place value on making good decisions. And, and comprehension is going to, to come to you. Depth perception, perpiscosity you will own based upon you taking your time, looking at the, the vocabulary, looking at the context, and that's the prime goal here, is for you to be open to and learn, and we gotta get started. And, and where we get started is the, the fear and respect of the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and, this, and this, of course, is humility's gift. My son, yield and accept. That goes to my lesson number six. That yielding is a big part of your Bible, and, and some of you need to understand that. And you, you can go to my, uh, my, less, my, my uh, playlist number six, six and I, I talk about yield and explain it to you in a, li a little bit more than what I'm going to do right now. But you need to accept the command. Listen to them, put them on your heart, and don't waver with them. And place value on them, and that's called confidence and faithful. You, you, you need to put confidence on the same thing God puts confidence on. God never lost confidence in reality. We lost confidence in reality. Hippies in America lost confidence in reality, so they, 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 they used to space out and talk about trees or, or elephants and, 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 and just space out. Well, Jesus Christ comes along to Adam's family, and I'm part of Adam's family, and we all spaced out. And Jesus comes, come over here and listen to reality, and you can get saved. Well, the prime goal is to be open to these commandments of reality, and put them on your heart, and it's a good decision, which is called wisdom, and, and you're going to get some comprehension out of this. Your mind is going to be elevated, and you're going to become an academic individual based upon simply listening to these simple principles. And of course he's emphasizing being open to listening. And, 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 and when you do that, you're, you're, you're respecting God for who he is. That he's the teacher and you ain't. I don't mind God being the teacher. I'm not a teacher. I'm a student. Now I convey some of the teacher's teachings, but I'm still I'm still not the rabbi. I, I am a, an assistant assistant. That's what I am. So this takes you to the fear of the Lord, and now you know what's going on. You you know God's name now. You know the name. The name means God's going to save you. So if you got saved, you know that God saved you because now you know the name means. <laughs> the name means I got saved. That's what it means. You called on the name, saved me, which is part of uh, um, uh, uh, playlist number two, sound doctrine how to get saved. Go to call on and trust in the Lord. We're, we're back to that again. And what's humility's gift? Humility's gift is, is you, you've now experienced what it is to put yourself in proper juxtaposition to the Lord. You, you're, you're in line now, and when you got in line, your eyes opened up, and you, and you became fearful. And, and that's what's supposed to happen to you when you come to Jesus Christ. You're supposed to have an experience of, whoa, whoa, whoa. Wowie Kazawi, he's a holy God. And I better get I better I better be getting on the ball. That's <laughs> we just looked at Romans chapter one. Where Paul talks about you better you better see nature and get on the ball because nature is telling you 
that, uh, that God demands everything in order, otherwise it gets chucked. Same thing here. You, you need to experience the fear that comes from kneeling before the Lord when he shows you who he is and who you ain't. And that's going to that, that, that's going to create a new respect out of you. And guess what's going to happen? Solomon says, your path is now going to be good. Why? Because you opened up your ear to eat of the storehouse of things that are beneficial for you. Which came from Shemaiah, the living bread, which came down from, he from heaven. That if any man eat this bread, well, Solomon's eating it. And he's sharing uh, the bread right now in the first chapter. This is the second chapter now, but both chapters are very deep. It, it could take a year to go through both those chapters. Well, not a year, but it, it, it's both of those chapters are very deep. And it, I came to these chapters that are deep on purpose. Esther, David, and Goliath, that's all subtext. I'm going to teach on some of those Sunday school kind of lessons, but not right now. I have a little bit of that already available, but we're focusing on the main sanctuary here, and we're focusing on steak and potatoes here. Cranberry juice and, and, and gummy bears, that's not really the focus here, and it shouldn't be, because we're not children anymore. This is not Sunday school. This is get down and get, get on it. I was considered a man who, who, who had a decent brain in college, and, and, and yet I had a problem with some of this stuff because you have to sit here and you got to work. Okay, you know, this is no cakewalk here. Speaking of cake, I have a lemon cake. I just cooked it, it smells good. Let's get going. So now you've experienced fear because you opened up your ear to reality and the truth. And, and, and all this truth, God has already stored up for years and years and years that God was born in truth and that he has truth everywhere. A truth about this, truth about yesterday, truth about tomorrow, truth about science, truth about, truth about psychology. He has truth about everything and it's all stored up and he knows all of it. And now he's sharing with you, and because you're going to seek the holy path now, you're going to receive the goods. Because you learned that the Lord wants you to yield to the commands and listen to them, and so that you can make good decisions, and it's a good decision for you to love the Lord your God and respect him. And that's where this all starts. And you did that in, in, in humility, and, and the gift of that humility you, was you experienced fear and respect. Your eyes were opened that, my goodness, you know what? I, I, I've sinned against God, and he still loves me, and he wants to take care of me. And, I, uh, and as a result, I probably should pay attention to what he says. That's, that's all we're talking about here over and over again. <laughs> yeah, there are different words. There are different, there are different ways to skin a cat, as they say. Well, we don't want to say skin and cat, but there are different ways to, that's a popular saying, but there's, there are different ways to approach the same thing. That's the point. And uh, when you do that, you're, you're going to, well, let's let that go. So every right path, you're going to find out now. That's how this is delineated, where, where, where you've been through the yielding, listening to the commands, you place value on, on pleasing Father God and listening to what he has to say, respecting him and, and, and having fear for his judgments because you better listen, otherwise that's your tale. And you're making good decisions now because you're learning wisdom and you're learning comprehension, vocabulary, context. And, and, and your prime goal was to be open to the commandments and listen and then to respect and fear and be humble, and humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and you experience fear, and now you're getting into the storehouse of Shemaiah, the living bread that came down from heaven, and you're eating that living bread, and you shall never see death now. No, it ain't, ain't going to happen. And you receive the goods, 
pertaining to your, your life now and the goods pertaining to your life to come. And these are the paths that you're going to walk on. Let's finish up. Okay, that's it for now. That's the end of two. I'm not to come back to two, but uh, because there's so much here, and as many of you can ascertain, the, 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 I, I love doing this all, all day, and there's more than enough to study. I do this almost every day, and I still don't have, I still haven't gotten what I want to do, but uh, it's, it's good to sometimes set your goals pretty high. Uh, it, it makes you work hard, but sometimes you can work too hard, <laughs> and you can start forgetting things, and I don't want to do that. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 1 and chapter 2. I went through chapter 1, but I decided to go through chapter 1 again and go to chapter 2, okay? Let's get into chapter 1 and chapter 2 of Isaiah. Uh, I, I'll probably put this playlist under uh, Sound Doctrine. I, I, I haven't decided yet. Because it is a hodgepodge of concepts. It starts out with uh, with prophecy and, and you know, the... the the name and the number and the mark of the beast and and the and the two beasts and all that kind of stuff, um, and then then we ended up going somewhere else. And but anyway, let's go to Isaiah chapter one. But I already read Isaiah chapter one, so I'm, I'm going to give a review and then we're going to try to get to chapter two, and that might be it for the day for me. Okay, let's. And what's nice about these books are they're adjacent to each other for turning. And in a way, God chose these three chap these three books as basically the center of your teaching of your, of your Old Testament. Um, David and Isaiah, first and second place, and then you could probably put Solomon in third place in your Bible. We, there is so much deep stuff in all three of these books, and they're right adjacent to each other, uh, pretty much. And, uh, and they're just chock full of honey for the mind. For those who wish to be intelligent, which is what Solomon emphasizes a lot, is, and Solomon emphasizes your will a lot. And uh, I don't understand why some Bible, Bible teachers that I know, they don't understand that. They, they, they don't understand that you can't, you, Solomon is a big part of your Bible. Because he emphasizes the will that we just looked at. Yield, will. Okay, it's a big part. And uh, anyway, it, it, almost every chapter of your Bible talks about yield and your volition. But, but let's move on. Isaiah chapter 1. I've already read it. Now let, let's give a quick review. So God called Israel... And he loved them, but they rejected him. That, that's the premise of this chapter in general. And he loved them, and they backslid. They went backwards. And he said they went really far back. They didn't just make one mistake according to the law and to the commandments of the Lord. They really made multiple errors. It's one thing to have, one, it's one thing to have a problem with doing the wrong thing, one thing, but it's another thing when you start getting into multiple areas. But we won't talk about that right now. So they're backslidden and they're backslidden far. Uh, he says that animals show more respect for their owners than what they're doing right now to the one who loves them. And they're basically a sick bunch and they're gonna soon be taken and they're gonna be um, conquered. And the religious leaders have a lot of temple activities that he's going to focus on. He, he, the Lord usually goes after the leaders first. In Matthew, I think that's, uh, what is that? Matthew, well, two times in Matthew, the Lord really gives it to the Pharisees. I mean, he really lays it on them and tells it like a T.I. is. He really lets them, he really lets them have it. You know, children of darkness or something. He just really lays on them. 
because they've been asking for it. If you don't want to hear a lot of uh, correction, then behave correct. That's, that's the way that goes. So these are a sick bunch, and, and God's going to let them be taken over by Babylon and Persia, uh, respectively, and, uh, you know, Nebuchadnezzar and Cyrus and so forth. And, but we have religious leaders with temple activities, and he said that you're having all these activities, and some of them are very solemn and serious, but he can't handle it because, obviously, it's hypocrisy. That's the point. You can read that chapter, and, and you know, you, I'm paraphrasing it, but I can do that because I've been studying a long time. You know, I'm not giving you uh, the the precise exegesis of everything in there, but it's it, it's it's close enough to where we can make some sort of simplification that the re religious leaders are having these solemn meetings, everyone come together, but the Lord says I can't handle it. No, that's enough because you're violent. And you're not taking care of the poor. And then he gives them the old uh, uh, come let us, which goes back to what again, Jeremiah? If. It always comes back to but and if. If thou do this. If thou do that. Which goes back to what again? You think you could have a chapter without volition and yield and wisdom? No. Almost every chapter in your Bible deals with volition and yield. The ability of a human to go left and right, it's up to you. He does the same thing here. Come let us reason. So come let us reason now together. Come let us reason together, saith the Lord, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be, they shall be as white as snow. So now we're looking at an absolute removal of all of your errors, and now, of course, this is a personal, in, in real time, where Isaiah is telling the people. He's the prophet for the people of Jerusalem, and he's right there in the capital, and he's giving them all this information. Now, this information is applicable to us, too, because this is not just to Israel. It's also to the 2,000-year period of Christ's church, okay? In other words, this your Bible is to people who are called, meaning you were born from Adam, and then when you get your Bible, you're basically being called. You're, you're being given the opportunity to do exactly what this most profound scripture is asking. Come let us. Okay. Well, come let us. It's, it's, it's not a command. It's come let us. You, you, you need to use your volition and, and, and then the Lord says, if again, and then if again, and, and we're back to the if word again. Come let us see. So do you want your stains to be removed? What all you have to do is go through these simple procedures and snap, crackle, pop. You are just as if you never sinned. And even if you're in the Old Testament, you're going to go to Abraham's bosom. And then when the Lord is resurrected, you're going to walk around Jerusalem, and then you're going to go to glory and have the old white robe on of glory. Uh, so if you be willing, there you go. So the Lord makes a proposition, and then he says, are you basically willing? That's the same thing Jesus told John's mother, right? She, she wants to talk about going to heaven, and being, and being advanced, you know, on the Monopoly board, you know, advanced place. And the master tells him, you don't know what you're talking about. Can you drink the cup that's before you? In other words, if you can yield to my satisfaction and love me with all of your heart, which is the same thing, because it's the same thing over and over again. It's a successful yield to, to, the, to the proposition of if is based upon you loving the Lord with all of your heart. Then everything else falls into place in, 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 in terms of is your yield sufficient? The master uses the word sufficient and enough. It obviously refers to or apparently re re refers to the simple idea um, did you love the Lord your God? And he's telling John's mother that, it, that, that loving me is drinking the whole cup. 
and listening to what I got to tell you, okay, and, and sit down. That's like my dad. <laughs> and there's nothing. There's nothing quite. There, there's nothing quite. There, there. There is not much of a difference in in, in proper parent training than what's going on here. And, and as a matter of fact, the, the chapter starts out with what? I love them. I coddle them. And I call them. And I spoil them. And look what I get. A bunch of rebels who are wild, buck wild. So, uh, so now there's now there is the uh, the offer. If you be willing, there you go. Are you going to yield to the proper actions as I commanded you? But if you, and then we have but if again. See, there we go again. First we had first we had come with us reason. Then we have if. Now we have but if. So uh, I was talking with a, with some brethren here the other day, uh, and, and I mentioned come let us. Then if. And then, but if, and they said, oh, I, I, I don't know. If the, I, I, no, 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 I, I'm a Calvinist. God's not going to tell me if. He just said it 50 times. What do you mean he's not going to tell you if? But, hey, no, he's going to make you, oh, okay, okay. Psalm 23 can get you confused. He maketh me lie down. Well, that might be more along the lines of, uh, of the, after the rapture. I'm quite sure he, he can make you lie down uh, while you're walking on this uh, plateau. And he will make you lie down. But obviously he's also going to tell you if, uh, here's your steering wheel. That's boots on the ground, Americanism, Bible teaching for you there. We have cars here. And we, can, and we know how it is to steer, steer a steering column. So, but if, but if you refuse and you become rebels, uh, because what you're doing is, is you have, you're violent, you're greedy, you're malicious, and, you, and you're loveless, and you're careless, and so on and so forth. Well, since you're this way, um, you're, 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 you're my enemy now. That's the point. You were my child, and I, I, I coddled you, I gave you the of the garden path, you have no excuse, and look at you. Now you become my enemy because I hate sin. God can't stand any kind of sin. You might perceive it as okay. I have lots of uh, uh, things I watch on the on the web here pertaining to some of the news reporters or something, and and they talk as though what they're saying they don't consider it sin or something that God hates. And one other thing that you learn as a Christian right away, and you should learn, is there's something that God hates and he's opposed to it, and it, it, and it would behoove you to remember exactly what those things are. Okay, that's it. That's what we do here, over and over again. So can you get back to the right path that's pleasing me? Uh, okay, now guess what? I'm going to send a redeemer, my son, who's going to redeem... You. And while he redeems you and purchases you, he, he's going to assess you. Your kinsman redeemer, Jesus Christ, he's the only redeemer. He's the only one who can redeem mankind. And that goes for people in Israel's day with Isaiah or our day. It's the same criteria that, that he's going to make assessments on your behavior. And he's going to assess who he's going to call, who he's going to uh, uh, coddle and so forth. And who he's going to reject, um, it, it, it gets complicated. Let's leave it at that. In other words, the whole process of everybody getting saved, the Redeemer is going to be the one who assesses the whole process. That is calling you, uh, teaching you, and quite possibly rejecting you and so forth. That's what Isaiah is referring to there. Which your Bible talks about quite a few times. That God, when he deals with people, he has an assessment period kind of thing. Or he's always making assessments. And uh, these converts must follow the path to cleanliness, which is always every part of every chapter of your Bible. you got to get your act together. And you, you're going to need God's power and his guidance to do that. Now, I have one more video, and I'll be, I'll be right back. I was going to shut down here, but let's have one quick video, and uh, that's what I'm going to do, okay?
That way we can finish Isaiah now that I'm in, uh, involved. I'll be right back. Jeremiah says Maranatha. Why? Because he's coming for those who love his appearing. And come now long expected Jesus. We do it every half hour here. We're, that's all we basically think. That's basically all we think about here. I've had people ask me, why don't you want to talk about being healed and, and some, other, some, some other things? And I tell them that I don't have to do that necessarily. Because love, it waits on the Lord to fix everything. The reason why you're probably having problems with uh, uh, having to repeat some book from the bookstore over and over again, which you really didn't need to do in the first place, is because you haven't developed a love of Jesus Christ. That's why you keep buying the same old book over and over again. You're having difficulty having confidence in God, and you want to you want to push that on me. And I don't have a, I don't have problems. Uh, with, uh, I, I might I might have some minor problems with having confidence in Father, but it's, it'll never be big and huge, uh, kind of the way you're telling me that the way you're thinking. Why? Because I'm pretty sure that I do love Daddy, and and I'm getting the impression that you don't, even though you walk through church. Otherwise, you wouldn't be having all these doubts all the time. Because love believes all things. That's the way it goes. Now, you might be saved, or you're a baby Christian, or uh, that's not really my business. My business is that I can kind of tell that you're, first of all, you're not a mature Christian. We know that snap, crackle, pop. Because those who are, have experience and, and, and are martyrs and been through the been through the, the potter's wheel, they don't have too many problems with, oh, I might, get, I might get healed and I might not, and the Lord might not heal me, so let me go buy a book. No, no. We simply read James, which says, go to the elders and get healed. That doesn't need, you don't need 10 books from some guy who might be collecting money or something. Whether he is or not, I don't know. Or, you know, who knows what the criteria is. I, I just threw that out there. I don't We'll be right back with the final section of Isaiah, which, which will be really quick. Okay? Jeremiah's going to shut down and be right back, and we're going to finish up uh, Isaiah 1-2. Okay? And this Bible study is smoking. This stuff is just the, it's the gold. It, it, it's, woo! This stuff here is intellect aflame, I'm here to tell you. And many of you see, see the same thing I do. We'll be right back. Maranatha.